as Maria says before, uh, thanks to John and to all the community for giving us this opportunity to present our work. Uh, you know that we are working with mycoplasma pneumonia, uh, but I think that there might be some synergies with the with the minimal cell community. So here I will talk about uh, this new technique that we developed called uh, Sure Editing, in which we combine oligorecombinating and programmable insertion and deletion of selection markers to efficiently edit the mycoplasma pneumonia genome. So this study started like <clears throat> four or five years ago, in which thanks to uh, uh, a sensor, or what do we call a, a chloramphenicol mutant allele, that was basically uh, a, a, a gene of chloramphenicol that was not functional because of uh, the insertion of a frame shifting nucleotide, uh, we screened several single-strand DNA recombinases, uh, looking forward to find a, a, a single-strand DNA recombinase to perform oligorecombinating in, in mycoplasma pneumonia because it's the most efficient technique uh, in, in, in general for, for bacterial genetics. So thanks to this sensor, we identified GP35. And we actually mix this, uh, this oligorecombinating based on GP35 with a CRISPR-Cas9 uh, counter-selection method. So basically with the idea that at the end of the process, uh, you selectively kill all the cells that have not incorporated your, your oligo, um, and then all the, all the survivor cells will carry out the, the intended modification. But at the end, what happened is that also the Cas9 system also uh, develops some mutations. So there is an initial population in your, in your cell uh, population that already contain mutations in the Cas9 system. And given that the the frequency of the or the editing rate uh, follows a, a exponential logic uh, depending on the on the deletion size, so short deletions are uh, are obtained quite efficiently, but large uh, deletions are, are obtained with less frequency. So let's say that the Cas9 evader rate is around 10 to the minus three. So that means that everything that is uh, the editing rate that is below this 10 to the minus three is difficult to to select with this system. So basically, in our hands, we, uh, for performing small deletions, like one per base, 50 per base, it was working pretty good. But at the moment that we were going farther than, let's say, 500 per base, we need an extensive screening to identify uh, the cells that were uh, carrying the intended modification. So actually, we moved to another system that was uh, less uh, less sexy, let's say, uh, in which uh, we, we created a PCR cassette carrying homology regions and, and a resistance marker. So since GP35 is a single-strand DNA recombinant, we generate a single-strand DNA fragment from this. So we develop a PCR with a protected oligo and a bioattenulated oligo. We incubate this PCR product with magnetic bits, and we disrupt the interaction between both strands with uh, sodium hydroxide, and we end up with a, with a single-strand DNA substrate that was transformed into the cells, and then GP35 was introducing this into the into the replication fork. So none of the systems were perfect because actually oligorecombinating was showing like a great editing performance because most many cells were incorporating the, the oligo and, and, the, and the modification was uh, taking place, but we cannot select those cells that were carrying the, the modification. While on the other hand, single-strand DNA stretches, uh, they show a poor editing capacity because because of their size, uh, they, they are not introduced efficiently in the replication form. But given the presence of the antibiotic resistances, uh, it was easy to select those uh, carrying the intended modification. So we, we came with the idea, like, can, can we not get the, the best of both, of both worlds, like getting the, the great editing performance of oligorecombinating and the strong selective capacity of, of an antibiotic resistant gene? So this is basically what we did in this uh, SURE editing protocol that stands for Selection of Ultra Rare Recombinating Events. So basically we co-transform an editing oligo and an selectroplasmid. So the editing oligo is the one that will perform the, the intended modification, but uh, it also carries uh, a recombination site for a, for a site-specific recombination. So for putting in clear words, let's say that we introduce a log site and that will be recognized by Cree protein. And the selector plasmid basically contains an antibiotic resistance gene and uh, this log site to be recognized by the by the Curie protein and two additional rec uh, recognition sites of a different uh, site specific recombinase. So basically, we co transform these two molecules uh, in the cell and then the oligo will get incorporated into the replication fork, uh, providing an edited genome but a phenotype that is not easily selectable. 
but then the plasmid will be uh, inserted inside of this log site that has been placed by the oligo, and then the whole plasmid is going to be inserted there, providing a selectable phenotopic, given the presence of an antibiotic resistance gene. And then later we can excise this plasmid from the detected area, uh, uh, can, uh, finishing with a markerless detected genome, but it will contain this uh, scar based on, on the two types of recombination sites that we have used for first insert and, and second excise the vector from the detected area. So from now on, I will just show you some examples of what we have done with this system. So basically, uh, as a first step, we, we wanted to test how the system was operating at, at gene level, let's say. So we select four different regions in the pneumonia genome uh, to perform a 1KB edit, which is more or less the, the standard size of a, of a gene in mycoplasma. Uh, and, and basically here I show you which are the expected PCR sizes uh, when uh, when analyzing by PCR the, the, the results. So you will have the wild type genome and the deleted genome will be bigger but because this, uh, despite of uh, having deleted the 1KB, it has the whole plasmid inserted there. And then later, uh, when you remove the plasmid from the deleted area, you will get a, a shorter uh, size. So basically, in all lossy, we got uh, like more than 50% of the analyzed colonies uh, were carrying the intended modification. And, and for some uh, lossy, even 100% of the colonies are analyzed. And then later, we transform with a second uh, plasmid uh, carrying the, the B3 uh, protein that was recognized in the sites intended to delete from the from the, pla from the deleted area the, the selector plasmid. And that was pretty efficient too. So once we have tested that at gene level it was working uh, really well, uh, we wanted to see which was the limit of the technique. So we, thanks to this essentiality study that we have uh, available for pneumonia, we identify the biggest deletable region in, in this genome, which is uh, composed basically by uh, almost, I think it's more than 20 genes that are uh, put in a row uh, that are non-essential and that spans for more than 30 KBs. So we develop a battery of oligonucleotides in which the left homology arm was always constant and the right homology arm was moving away from this left side uh, from 90 base pairs to 30 KBs. Um, basically, as you can see here, uh, regardless of the, of the attempted uh, editing, the deficiencies were always above 50% and in many cases, 100% uh, of the colonies analyzed. Also, I told you before that uh, the protocol ends with a genome that uh, will carry a, a scar based on the on, on the recognition sites of the specific recombinases uh, used for insertion and deletion of the plasmid. Just uh, I can I don't have time to go into the details, but this is just to show you that we developed two different systems to deal with this. Because uh, if you will perform iterative rounds of editing, that would be a problem because uh, you will have this scar that will uh, disturb the next rounds of addition. So one approach was, okay, can we make scarless modifications? Can we remove that scar from the area? Yes, we can do it. We can include an, one SC1 site as a counter selection agent and do a second recombinant step to remove the, the, the scar from the area. So you can perform iterative rounds. And also, since we are using site-specific recombinases, <clears throat> we develop a battery of plasmids uh, carrying different site-specific recombinases and oligos uh, that use different recognition sites. Uh, we, we tested the performance uh, in, in the same region to perform a, a, almost 1KB uh, deletion. And most of them were, uh, well, all of them were working pretty good and efficiencies were more or less comparable except for B car recombinants that was perhaps uh, behaving a bit uh, uh, worse. Um, finally, uh, since we are uh, introducing the plasmid, to select, we we ask like, okay, can we use this to introduce gene platforms at the at the desired locus? So basically, this is what we did, and we did it in a context of genome streamlining because sometimes you want to delete an area that contains also in the middle essential genes. So we identify this area in which uh, MPN 636 and 637 are essential. So we create an oligo that will delete everything. And we clone these essential genes in the in the uh, selector plasmid, and as you can see here, uh, we we succeed in in this approach, and most of the colonies were carrying the intended modification. And um, finally, uh, I told you that uh, we used two different recombinants: one to insert, one to uh, uh, excise the vector from the detected area. So we wanted to create a, a plasmid that was carrying all the components to do this thing, a plasmid that is able to self-insert and self-excise from the from the chromosome. 
but in mycoplasma there's only one uh, inducible system available that is based on the tetracycline so we develop a novel inducible system based on Qmate uh, and we put it uh, to control the, the recombinase that uh, is uh, controlling the, the excision of the plasmid, the Vicry. And as you can see in the panel C, uh, or the, 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 the clones that were edited and, and induced uh, were not able to grow in the condition in which we had puromycin and Qmate because this is incompatible with growth because if you, if you induce uh, the weakery recombinase, uh, the, the plasmid is excised and you lose the puromycin resistance. Uh, and that was pretty much everything. Uh, just uh, to conclude, why can't you editing be of interest for the minimal cell community? Because I guess that for fine tuning of the minimal cell genotype, is, uh, it could be a cheaper and faster way, avoiding the NGIS modification and genotransplantation transplantation process. Uh, and it should be easily adaptable to other mycoplasma species, as oligo recombinating has been proven functional, functional in more than 30 species already, and site-specific recombinase is working pretty much every organism. Uh, regarding this, uh, let's say that GP35 recombinase has been already proven in, in mycoplasma gai septicum recently by the group of FINRA, and also have in mind that the Qmate inducible system uh, that clearly outperforms the TET inducible system in terms of the dynamic range that it shows uh, might be of, of interest for the for the minimal cell community. Um, yeah, the, the, as Maria says, the, the final paper should be fully indexed in pavement in a couple of weeks. Uh, looking forward to collaborate with you. Thank you, Carlos. Where will this paper be published? It's the nucleic acid research. Great. How long is a typical cycle to make make a gene deletion or significant change as you've described? Uh, well, it depends on the for pneumonia that you know that is a slow dividing organism. Let's say that it takes like about two, three weeks because uh, it involves uh, mm -hmm. a, a, a moment in which you have to isolate colonies and that's the more uh, tricky part because colonies take like almost 10, 12 days to grow. Uh, okay. You, you can't see them. So ba basically, it sounds like a week, ten days to do the to to do the um, molecular synthetic biology, and then patients while you wait and see what happened. But, yeah, actually, I think that uh, pretty much is patients because they have in mind that the selector plasmid is always the same one because the specificity is provided by the oligo. So you can reuse the selector plasmid for every edit that you perform, and and then you co-transfer both molecules. So you co-transfer both molecules, and then you sit on the plate, and you can do other things until ten days later and sure. pick the colonies. Can you? I I know nothing about Qmate. Can you tell me about the Qmate system, please? Uh, yeah, actually, I, I was having a slide prepared for this. Uh, so basically, this Qmate system uh, has been. Uh, we, we choose to adapt this for mycoplasmas because apparently it's a white portable technology that has been. What what, uh, what is Qmate? Uh, I don't know exactly the. It's a chemical compound. Uh, I don't remember exactly now the 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 name the the chemical name, but okay. uh, I can. But I mean, if you I can look, look it up. The, I was just curious. Yeah. Uh, so this is based on, on a system that is originally from Pseudomonas, uh, but has been adapted to many other bacteria, even to mammalian cells. So we basically, it's the typical system with a repressor and an operator. So we just play a bit with the promoters controlling the repressor and the, and the one in which we place the, the operator. And, and basically, you can see here that uh, the, the dynamic range is much better than the one shown by, by the tetracycline system because uh, the leakiness is more or less comparable, but the, the fault change once you induce is like uh, much better. In, in the petted, in, in our hands, we get like three, four times fault change expression between the non-induced and the induced condition. And with our system, we got like almost eight times induction. I wonder if we could put GC rich sequence upstream of the of the gene that you wanted to induce so that you would avoid any any of the transcription that that it, it, is there a way to make this a tighter selection mm -hmm. But why do you think that is not a tight enough? 
Well, it's still leaky. You know, I'd like to More. see absolutely on or off if possible. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, if you compare it on, on the B panel, the Anindus, which is on black, mm -hmm. and the others, yeah, I mean, they, there might be some leakiness. But I think, yeah, I guess that you can you can play a bit with the system where you can uh, put a, a rich GC region or even play with the with the strength of the promoter controlling the repressor. You can try to even express further amounts of the repressor and cross your fingers mm -hmm. that this is not affecting the, the inducibility of the system. You know, Mar Maria's group showed previously that in, in again, this would be more of a problem in the extremely low GC mycoides system, that there is, um, there is transcriptional starts all over the place because of the high AT content. Mm -hmm. And so if you were to really bump up, and, and in, in pneumonia, this wouldn't be as much of an issue, I would think. But but still, you know, it it. I, I mean, I I see that that you've got a little leakiness, not much, but but absolute on and off is still you know something that that one would want if one could get it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, there there are some systems that have been described uh, for this absolute uh, on and off putting degrons on this thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is something that we can explore also. Mm -hmm. And I assume that you guys are now using this to make your therapeutic M pneumonia strains. Yeah, because the other systems were like not uh, efficient mm -hmm. for the kind of engineering that we are doing right now at, at Pulmobiotics. It was good enough to make like uh, some minor modifications, but for the for the work that we are doing currently, we need a powerful tool. You know, where where I see that with with this community, as we think about genes of unknown function that are essential. So you can't take them out, but you could potentially turn them off with this and then and then hope to observe some kind of phenotype. I mean, other than the cells just not growing, but you know, it's it's a long shot, but but this technology makes me makes me think it might be possible unless you had something that was just you know, if, if it's essential and expressed at one copy per cell, this wouldn't necessarily do the job. But if it's essential and expressed at high levels, this might give you a clue. Hmm. Other questions? So I, I have oh, quite no, a few. No. Yeah, yeah, related, because we use that system in, um, in algae, in diatoms. And it seemed to work on the first, uh, you know, on the, on the first development was, it seems to be working so well. But with a little bit of propagation, our plasma that carried the repressor were really recombining. So it, took like, it looked like it was like super toxic. So the leakiness became so problem that we kind of at the moment abandoned it. So I just wonder, do you see any problems with uh, toxicity or over, over a period of time that, that the system works? Or is it just kind of initially working and then did you observe any time falling apart, essentially? Well, have a mind that here on this on this technique is inserted on on a plasmid that then later is excised. So because the the self plasmid the plasmid like uh, auto destroys itself, so we cannot uh, evaluate like in the long term how the how the repressor or or this uh, cumid repressor system is working in the long term. But um, to to do this uh, screening of the different promoters, uh, we introduce them by transposition in the in the genome of the strains. I mean, I haven't played with them for 30 generations or 50 generations, but I, I didn't see a problem. But maybe now that you mention, I will I will just put them to grow and, and see if we see something weird. Okay, but that's great. Okay, thanks. Um, any other questions for for Carlos? I, I have a quick question. Uh, great work, Carlos. Uh, really impressive. I was just wondering, with the tool, with the sure editing tool, do you think that multiplexing uh, genetic engineering steps would be possible? Could you do uh, deletions at two different or, or, or three or, or more uh, genes at a time? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. And this is something that we 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 make a small uh, try and uh, 
the beginning it seems that there was something, but then later we couldn't confirm it. I mean, we we haven't uh, go deep into this uh, region. I think that the, the major limitation is uh, the, the number of molecules of oligo and the number of molecules of plasmid that you are able to introduce into the cell. Because, of course, you will need like uh, at least two or three. Uh, so actually, to, to tell you the truth, uh, we, we try first with two different selection markers and two different uh, recombinant systems to insert. Uh, and it seemed to work. But then later, uh, when we tried to do it with one uh, selection marker, uh, we couldn't see the difference between having two edits or one edit. So this is something that we want to explore further. Uh, but so far, we don't have like really consistent data about it. But it, it will be, yeah, that's the next logical steps for, for the system. Uh, 